Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so today I wanted to take a look at doing some upgrades on this 8 bit though NES30 arcade stick. So, my first impressions when I unboxed and reviewed this the other day was I didn't really care for the, the feel of the buttons or the stick. And, you know, that was kind of unfortunate for the price that I paid, but, you know, a lot of people were interested in this stick, and, and really the main reason is because it's Bluetooth. But for $80, Bluetooth arcade stick, not a bad deal, but these buttons just really should have been a little higher quality. I understand not using official Sanwa components to cut down on cost, but there's so many, you know, clones and and different options. You could use the official buttons, clone buttons, and there's a lot of them out there that just feel so much better than those stock buttons that come with this, including the stick. So first thing we're going to want to do is take the bottom off, and I've already done that. You know, it's just six screws. You're going to use Phillips head to remove. Boom, boom, boom. Get that bad boy off, and then this is what the inside looks like. So pretty clean. They, they have this, you know, set up pretty well with the wiring and whatnot. We have our encoder down here. Up top is going to be the Bluetooth board. And then over here is our USB for power charging. And the battery is underneath the uh, encoder. So what I like to do is remove the Bluetooth just so the, the controller's not constantly trying to turn on if I'm messing with things. And you see, like I said, they, they kind of have this nice and tidy with a lot of uh, zip ties and whatnot holding everything in place. So we're going to have to remove a couple of these off of the Bluetooth wiring because that is connected to the controller wires and we're going to be removing those so be careful not to snip anything and i tried not to accidentally snip any of these wires for the controller because i am going to wind up using them for something else eventually or if i want to put it back in here i got it so the the one neat thing with this encoder is that they actually mark the directions for the inputs for the stick. So you could probably barely see it, but it does say up, down, left, and right. So it doesn't leave you in the air as to where you're supposed to plug it in. And you don't have to write it down or make a diagram or anything. It's already marked for you. So that, that was cool. I appreciated that, seeing that. Like, man, sweet. I don't have to, I don't have to tag anything or, or draw pictures to get this done. So we're just going to go ahead and disconnect these four plugs that are, you know, the inputs from the stick. Now, there's going to be a couple things, you know, you could possibly reuse these wires for your upgrade. I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to take this whole stick out and use, you know, my own wiring that I have left over. But you can easily go ahead and use the same wiring. But it is soldered onto the micro switches on this stick, which is, ah, uh, you know, that's that's a nice connection. But preferably, I'd rather have quick disconnects to to make things easier. So we're gonna need a Phillips head and a flathead screwdriver in order to remove the stick from this box. So you could use a little power drill, whatever. We just have to remove these four screws on the mounting plate for the stick. And most sticks that are like this are going to be pretty similar. And you'll see that in a moment when we put the other one in. And I do want to note, you should probably remove the ball top first before removing the screws. So put your, your flat head, and we'll, we'll show that in a moment here. I don't know why I wasn't thinking, but typically you want to remove the ball top from the stick before you remove the mounting plate. That way you're not struggling to get it off. Because essentially you're just going to put a flat head into the, the groove on the bottom of the stick that you can kind of see right in the middle there. Just to kind of brace it in place and then turn the, the ball top counterclockwise to loosen it and take it off. And the one thing I want to point out, and I'm going to show it in a moment the best that I can, is that the threading for, that are in the, the mounts, the screw mounts on this stick are very shallow. Um, there's, there's not very much threading to hold this stick in place. It's really only, it, it's, 
I don't know how to how to explain it, but if you I can't really look down this hole on camera, but if you can look through there on your own, you'll see that the threading go is all the way down and it's just smooth from the top part all the way down and it looks like it's only going to be enough threading to catch about a third of the screw. I don't know what I feel about that. You know, maybe there's a reason they did it that way. I don't know, but just be careful you know, screwing this thing in or unscrewing it. That way you don't screw up the threading because like I said, there's not much threading to catch. So here, like I said, I'm just going to brace the stick with the flat head and then counterclockwise on the ball, turn it to get it off. Like I said, it's easier to do that before you remove the mounting plate, but Hey, I did it backwards. Whatever. It's all good. So there we got the stick out. We're done with that stick. Pretty awesome. So we'll set that aside. Possibly use that. And I I typically, instead of a flathead, I use my key for, for my car to, to do that. I do that all the time with sticks that I'm working on. This this flathead that I had was really thin and did not get a good grip, so I used my key. But here we're looking at like this is not an exact Sanwa stick, but this is a replica Sanwa. I have a couple others that I'm using in another project, but this, the micro switches are all wired to the, the board and they run to a five pin connector. So you'll have the connections for each direction and then the ground all running to the five pin connector. And in order to use that, a clone version or a actual Sanwa that has a five pin connector in this stick you're going to have to put a little work into place because there is no five pin connector on the encoder. So they made it a little tougher and there's a way around that, but it requires a little bit of work. You could disassemble your Sanwa stick and, and solder wiring to all the micro switches and whatnot, and then daisy chain the ground. But it's a lot of work just to get a Sanwa into the stick. So I'm not going to bother doing that at the moment. I'm just going to use another Sanwa clone that doesn't use a five pin connector. It uses the, the quick disconnects on the micro switches. So as you see here, we have a, we have the posts actually on the micro switches versus the other one. Everything was soldered into to a board and running to the five pin connector. So this is what we're going to use. This stick is, is made by Blee. Um, they have a lot of lower price components and I like to use them occasionally because their, their products are pretty good. Um, but this stick, you got to make sure you take off your dust guard, take the ball top off, take the dust car, dust guard off and then place her in. And any of these Sanwa style sticks, Zippy, Blee, you know, any of those brands out there that are mimicking Sanwa, they're going to fit right into this and stay in place with the mounting posts that were were made for the original stick this came with they'll all just fit on there snug you just got to get your screws back in there and then screw them back down so here i'm actually just barely pulsing it because i don't want to screw up those threads so as soon as i hear it hit i'm done i'm not gonna i'm not gonna push it anymore like i said I, i'm not 100 percent why there's such little threading on here but I'm being careful because I don't want to screw it up and have the, the screws fall out and then the stick just fall off of, fall off of the, the mounting position within there. So now she's in there mounted, but we still have a few things to do. We obviously need to, to wire everything in. Like I said, we could use these wires. You just need to either snip them or desolder them off of the connections, but... I have I have spares, so I'm not going to go through that trouble right now. But yeah, you could easily just snip them off, and then you know use a wire stripper and, and get a little a little bit of the wiring exposed, and then you know either solder them onto these connections on your new stick, or you could you know I've done it before in a pinch, but you could just kind of twist them on as long as they're not touching anything, but it would be better to solder them to make sure you're getting a good connection. But like I said, I do have spare wires. I have tons of wiring and these do fit on the encoder. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount them all up onto the stick and get ready to plug them in. So all you're gonna do is just boom, you have two connections. 
put them on there for each micro switch. Nothing major to it. And then once you have all of them plugged in, you're going to be ready to figure out what we need to do as far as directionals go. So we're going to put our dust guard and our ball top on for now. And she already feels a lot better. I could already tell just by moving the stick around. And here I'm going to go ahead and tighten that just so the ball top doesn't come loose. Like I said with my trusty key. What? And it does. It does. This blee stick just feels so much better. And there's a reason for that. And I'll, I'll kind of explain in a little while why this stick, even though it looks fairly similar, why it feels better. Um, but here we're, you know, I kind of pushed up to find, okay, which micro switch is hitting up. So that's all you really need to do is look at your stick, press that direction, see what micro switch it's hitting and then connect it to the board. Here, my last input that I was working on could not reach the encoder. So I'm just stripping the wires. And since I have spares, I'm just going to go ahead and twist them on, match the colors, white to white, blue to blue, whatever color you got if you need to extend it. This is just one quick getaway of doing it. You could just, you know, expose the wire on both ends and connect them and you know, put some heat shrink on there or, you know, some electrical tape. Me, I'm just twisting them onto the actual quick disconnect. I don't put anything on it at this time, but later on I did put electrical tape because you do want to make sure that those connections, if they're bare, you know, they're, they could short something out or just cause your buttons not to function properly. So you do want to make sure that any exposed wiring or bare metal on those cords are covered up like I said electrical tape or some kind of heat shrink or, or whatever will work I went ahead and did that later but just for purposes of upgrading this I didn't bother doing that at the moment but that gave me enough length of wire to go ahead and plug this last input in so that works for me for the time being Maybe a little too much wire, but that's all right. It, at least it, it made it. At least it made it over there. So there we go. We've got our stick fully ready to go. Everything's plugged in. Plugged back into the encoder. Now with these buttons, I'm not going to change out the wiring. I'm going to use the wires that they have in here because they're going to work for any Sanwa style micro switches that you have so with this i'm going to use actual sanwa buttons and i'm going to i'm going to show you with with i'm going to show you a couple options though but with these for some reason the you know the buttons that came with it they're trying to mimic sanwas but the throw on hitting the micro switch and registering is way off to me compared to a sanwa button where a sanwa button you barely touch it and it registers and then we also have, you know, if you look, the blue button is an actual Sanwa button. This white one is, is like a fake Sanwa. But this white button, I'll put a link in the description for this button as well. These work in here just fine. But they have like a little different feel to the button, like kind of in between Sanwa and in between a HAP style button, which would be like one of these where it's a little clicky. And that, that's kind of cool. I like that combination of Sanwa and Hap. Sometimes I actually prefer Hap over everything, but with Hap buttons, yes, you can mount them in here, and they will fit in the holes just fine. But when you put your plate back on, these are too long. They will not fit with the micro switch attached to where you can close the arcade stick back up. So unless you can find some Hap buttons that are shorter, uh, you're not going to be able to use Hap. You're going to have to use Sanwa or Saimitsu style buttons. But for this, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and just use some spare Sanwas that I had lying around. But you could use the cheaper buttons as well. The cheaper, the white ones I was showing you, they're about a dollar a button. These guys right here are gonna be, you know, maybe closer to five dollars a button. And if you can see, these say Sanwa on the micro switch and on the actual button. So that's how, you know, that's one way to tell that you have authentic Sanwa buttons. Both parts need to have that Sanwa 
logo, um, you know, on there to know that they're actual Sanwa buttons. I haven't really seen clones that put Sanwa name on them. They're typically just bare or have a little crown logo on them. But as you can see, these, you know, when you're removing them, there's these, like, kind of the sides. There's a bit of plastic that catches, and you have to squeeze those to remove the buttons. But here I'm just kind of showing, like, you know, they both look the same, and they're modeled the same, but the micro switch is just so off on the, the, the ones that came with the system that I it just it doesn't work for me. Original Sanwas are very sensitive, and you don't have to mash them to make them function to register. Whereas the ones that came with this, you really need to hit them. And the the register of the input just feels way off to me, and I, I don't like that. So that's why I'm putting real Sanwas in here. But just go ahead, disconnect. Like I said, you're going you're gonna to remove your, your quick disconnects and then squeeze those tabs on the side of the buttons from the inside and then push it out. It'll come right back out. Your new button, push it in. It will click as long as you line it up properly on the stick into the hole there. And then plug in your, your, your wiring back in. And when you're removing the wiring, just be real careful. You know, if you use your fingers, it could be kind of tough because some of these are on there pretty tight. And it is a pretty cramped space. Um, but just make sure you're pulling by the actual quick disconnect and not the wiring. If you pull by the wiring, you risk ripping it out and just ruining that, that quick disconnect. You, you really don't want to do that. So here I've got, you know, fast forward. I got all the buttons put in. Like I said, we just reused the same wiring that was in there for the buttons. And I did use, you know, several red Sanwa buttons. I didn't have a, I just grabbed a handful of whatever and they're in there. But like I said earlier, I, I with this long wire that I spliced, I am going to need to cover that metal up. But right now I just kind of moved it out of the way. But if you do the same thing, please make sure you cover that up with electrical tape or a heat shrink. Since that's all done, we got all our buttons in place. And as you see, very simple and easy process to do. There's really nothing to it. Screw your bottom plate back on. Like I said, it was just those six screws to get her in there. Screw her back on. But really what you should do before you screw everything on is to test her. Make sure all your buttons work. That you didn't miss something. That you didn't cross you know, over your, your directional inputs and accidentally put right on left. Stuff like that. But you, that would be the best bet. Get everything tested before you go ahead and put the bottom plate back on. But it's not that big a deal to remove it again. But that's always key. Make sure everything functions before you put it all back together. Don't want to have that pain in the butt of removing everything. But that was pretty much it. Um, I might need to change this ball top because I noticed the ball top I put on there is really scuffed up. But ah, that's beside the point. But all Sanwa buttons in here. New stick that's a copy of a Sanwa stick. But I wanted to point this out. This this gate, four-way gate on the original stick that came with, it's it's so much more narrow that it barely hits the actual micro switches for the inputs. So you get a lot of missed inputs when you use this stick. And I think that was the reason why off the bat I didn't like it because I just my the registering of moves wasn't working properly. Whereas the, the gate and the access to the micro switches on this Blee, you know, Sanwa style stick is a little more open and actually hits the switches completely. Whereas the original just barely touches them and you still hear that click so you don't notice it. But like I'm saying, I just noticed it just does not register properly because it's barely touching the micro switches. But I'll put the options for all these different buttons, some Sanwa style clones, some actual Sanwa. You know, I'll put a, a link for different sticks. I'll put, you know, a little section of, hey, this is exactly the parts I used. But they're all going to function pretty similarly. And boom, that's one way you're going to get this stick behaving the way you would like her. So I hope you guys appreciate this quick little tutorial. There is nothing really to it. Very simple process. This is pretty pretty um, typical of any stick. 
But smash that like button if you could. Really would appreciate it. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And I will catch you guys next time. Boom!